There was a time when a single electronic system could be tested with one or two pieces of test equipment. A television set, for example, could be tested using a signal generator. The test results were displayed on an oscilloscope. However, as electronic equipment grew in size and complexity, additional personnel and test equipment were needed to conduct a thorough checkout. The number of tests to be performed increased, and this in turn lengthened the amount of time required for checkout. With the coming of the space age, the problems associated with conventional methods of testing multiplied. Launch vehicles, for example, were tested and retested to assure performance. The addition of manned spaceflight and its risk to human life compounded the problem still further. Because of the increasing number of tests and the limited time available for conducting the tests, it became obvious that conventional checkout methods could not be used for future space programs. During the planning of Project Apollo, our challenging lunar landing program, the need for more efficient and versatile test methods became urgent. In order to ensure the spacecraft's performance and reliability, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, with the support of General Electric, has developed ACE, an acceptance checkout equipment which will be used from factory through the final pre-launch checkout of the spacecraft. It is an advanced, integrated system that provides centralized control of spacecraft checkout operations. Through the use of computers and modern data handling techniques, ACE is capable of testing individual systems in the command, service, and lunar modules, as well as testing the integrated systems. The ACE equipment, which will be used at all Apollo checkout locations, may be thought of as two functional systems, command and display. The command system consists basically of test consoles, a command computer, and transmitting equipment. With the command system, test operators may conduct a wide variety of tests from controls on their consoles. The test commands are received and interpreted by a computer, which in turn sends appropriate instructions to the spacecraft. The command system thus initiates testing. In a similar checkout configuration, instructions are sent to the lunar module. Test results are monitored by the display system. The display system consists of data acquisition and recording equipment, another computer, and display devices located on the test consoles. Signal flow through the display system begins with the transmission of test data to the data acquisition and recording equipment. A part of the data is then routed to the display computer where it is processed for presentation on alphanumeric cathode ray tube or CRT displays. The second part of the data is sent direct to the system consoles for presentation on other recording and display devices. These, then, are the basic functions of the command and display systems. In a typical ACE installation or ground station, checkout operations would be initiated and monitored from a control room. Here are contained eight groups of test consoles, one for each functional system of the spacecraft or lunar module. These systems include environmental control, fuel cell and cryogenics, power and sequential, guidance and navigation, stabilization and control, propulsion and reaction control, instrumentation, and communications. An additional console for the test conductor provides a means to coordinate and monitor all test activities. And at some locations, an Aeromed console is provided for the monitoring of astronaut biological functions. A better understanding of the acceptance checkout equipment may be obtained by following the signal flow of a test command and the resulting test data through a simplified system block diagram. 
Test commands are initiated at each console by setting switches on units called start modules. The setting of the switches generates digital commands which are sent through a communications unit to the command computer. In order that the command computer may process inputs from many consoles, the communications unit operates essentially as a commutator by scanning the start modules on each console sequentially. When a test command is initiated, the scanning process stops momentarily and the command is transferred from the console to the computer. The scanning process takes place very rapidly. Therefore, to the individual console operators, there is no perceptible delay in their individual test commands. The communications unit thus allows each test console to operate simultaneously with and independently of the other consoles. The computer receives test commands from the communications unit and generates digital command messages for transmission to the spacecraft. The command computer interprets and acts upon each test command under the control of a program contained in the computer memory. The result of a specific command from a start module may vary depending upon the test to be performed. Some commands may result in specific on-off events, such as relay closures. Other commands may cause the computer to initiate a sequence or series of tests. The computer issues a series of test commands upon receiving a single input from a console. From the computer, test commands are sent to the transmitting equipment for transmission to the spacecraft over a hardline link. Each message is sent twice. At the spacecraft, receiving equipment compares the two messages to ensure that the command was properly received. A verification reply message is then generated and transmitted back to the computer and to indicators on the test console. The operator thus knows that the test command was properly received at the spacecraft and that the test was initiated. After receipt of the test command, the spacecraft performance and the test data are monitored by sensors which are coupled to commutating and transmitting equipment. Most of the data is commutated, converted to a digital format, and transmitted in pulse code modulated, or PCM form, over a hardline link to the ACE ground station. A small portion of the test data is frequency modulated and transmitted over a separate hardline link. The digital test data is composed of two types, event data and analog data. Event data represent an on-off function, such as a relay closure or an out-of-tolerance condition. Analog data represents a changing condition, such as a rise in temperature or a varying voltage. Following the data transmission over the hardline link, it is received by data acquisition equipment at the ground station. Here it is routed to decommutators and to recording equipment. Magnetic tapes of raw data provide a permanent record of the test and allow a playback at any time for additional analysis. The decommutated analog and event test data follows two paths from the data acquisition equipment. One path goes to the display computer and contains selected portions of the data that have been compared by the data acquisition equipment with known limits to determine if an out-of-tolerance condition or a varying function exists. The display computer performs additional computations on spacecraft data for display, control of test sequences, and the generation of compressed data recordings. The computer then generates and transmits a binary word to the symbol generation equipment. This equipment uses the digital words to generate alphanumeric display signals for presentation on the console CRT displays. The alphanumeric characters are displayed to the console operator in the form of pages of information.
the particular page to be displayed can be selected by the operator. If certain test data is out of limits, the characters representing that data will blink. This alerts the operator of an existing problem. The display computer also generates and transmits a binary word to the multiplexing and distributing equipment for control of console displays. An additional function of the display computer is the control of test sequences initiated by the command system, thus providing automatic checkout of spacecraft subsystems based upon discrete responses of the display link. The second path of data from the data acquisition equipment transfers digital information to multiplexing and distributing equipment. The data is then sent to three types of display devices on the consoles, recorders, meter modules, and event modules. The recorders are used to log a permanent record of both analog and event information. Meter modules are incorporated in the consoles to give the operator a continuous display of test parameters. The event modules, meanwhile, notify the operator that specific events have occurred. The displaying and recording of the test data at the consoles complete a signal flow of a test command and test data through the ACE system. The operations described for the command and display systems are basic to all system testing. In addition to the primary equipment groups shown and discussed thus far, support systems also form an integral part of the acceptance checkout equipment. These include a central timing system, which provides a common base of data and test correlation. A closed circuit television system which provides for the visual monitoring of remote test operations. A multi-channel intercommunication system which provides for two-way voice communication between operations personnel. And a switching system which provides for a switchover of the major equipment groups of the ACE ground station. The switching system enables access of any control room to any computer room and any computer room to any test area. During test periods, all control room operations may be observed by the system test conductor and the test project engineer. Both are seated at an elevated console. Senior test engineers concerned with the functional spacecraft systems are seated at the low consoles. From here, they may direct their respective test engineers at the high consoles. The ACE system represents a significant advance in the state of the art for checkout equipment. Conceived as a building block design, ACE has the growth potential to meet a variety of test requirements. As space vehicles become more complex, additional test consoles may be added to a basic ACE station. ACE systems are installed at four locations. At the North American Rockwell Corporation Downey facility, ACE is being used for subsystem and integrated system testing of the command and service modules. Equipment similar to that shown here is installed at the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation in Bethpage, New York, and at NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas. At Grumman, the system is used for assembly and checkout of the lunar module. At the Manned Spacecraft Center, the testing of the spacecraft, both manned and unmanned, in simulated space and lunar environments is accomplished. The fourth installation is at the Kennedy Space Center. Here, the complete range of subsystem and integrated system testing takes place, from receipt of the spacecraft modules through spacecraft and launch vehicle mating and the final pre-launch checkout. The performance requirements and complexity of Apollo are surpassed only by the challenge and importance of its mission. The use of the ACE system during factory and pre-launch checkout represents a vital step in assuring Apollo's reliability and success. The growth potential of ACE 
and its ability to monitor rapidly a wide variety of tests assures its role in our future space program.